much. Now, uh, Bellular's been pumping out the videos lately, and he's got a new one, so we're gonna check it out. Two got confirmed. The eight regions Blizzard hasn't yet added to WoW. Let's check this out. Let's see what it's all about. Bellular, like I said, he's been pumping out the videos lately. This man's a machine. You might hit the end key and think, have we got an absolute limit to what our world map can hold? Because, man, you throw Fuck a few this guy again. in there, <laughs> and it's going to be pretty crowded. The answer is firmly uh. no. We still have so much of Azeroth to explore, and yes, even on the side of the planet we're usually on. Last time I did this, years ago, we got quite oh my a God. few right. Whoa, look at how young Bellular looks here. Oh, man. Have we all aged uh, this much? For Azeroth knocked out a few big ones like Kul'Drask, Sandalar, <laughs> and even Crestfall. Now, we're on the Dragon Isles. You may think, ah, oh, you've got no more islands left. Why are you doing a video? No. <laughs> this expansion is doing so much more than bringing us to just the Dragon Isles. It is indeed setting oh, really? up a whole new era of potential. Ooh. 1007 has Ooh. a ton of references okay. to places like Telebeam, the South Seas, and lands beyond the world map with treasure the likes of which we've never seen before. It Very is piratey. really exciting. I mean, before this expansion even launched, we found assets in the game files that hadn't shown up yet, and they all looked like exploration. We had well, Blood Elf Destroyers, Alliance oh, Skyships, yeah. Horde That's Zeppelin a beautiful Towers, Blood Elf and Wyvern ship. Posts. I mean, those Night Elf boats, what are they doing? It's all stuff to get us somewhere, like today's sponsor. Squarespace.com forward that slash transition. Valley, gaming, the best place to rapidly you establish yourself on the web. There you I'm go, Squarespace. That transition got me. Those That that Blood Elf boat was amazing. So was that Night Elf one. A lot of boats, a lot of islands. To just get the web High potential for pirate expansion. Done when I need it to be done. Because, like, look, there's nothing worse than having a massive task list, a tight timeline, but struggling, Squarespace fiddling around stuff to get it to work. And that is exactly where the ease of use of Squarespace is fantastic. Yeah. Their site builder is just so okay. easy to use regardless of your prior experience and with fantastic features like memberships, e-commerce, and mailing lists, they democratize a web like no other. If you say so, As an Bill. example, in my job, I do look through a lot of, uh, well, student portfolios and professional mm -hmm. portfolios that come my way. And honestly, well, a lot don't really look pro right? Maybe bad formatting, layouts, and navigation that makes no sense. Uh, web design that really doesn't I still have no desire to make a website. Whatever their work is, shine. And that's really where Squarespace can solve a big problem for a lot of people. Like if I see someone who's got the great content, right? But they've got it looking fantastic with an easy to use portfolio that looks snappy, runs fast, all of that stuff. Then I yeah. know that, yeah, yeah, their portfolio is great in terms of the actual stuff in it. But in terms of everything this is else, a longer ad than usual. resourceful, and that they want to respect my time by making my job easy. That's just one example of how Squarespace will be able to help you out. So whether you're a local business, an online seller, there it is, there or it is. student there about it is. to Bell embark on your career, Squarespace is the place to build your web presence. You can make your site for free today <laughs> with my link, and you can use code Bellular Gaming. Bellular does change with his wardrobe plan quite often during these shows. Live. That's squarespace.com forward slash Balular Gaming. Thanks, right. them, and let's there go. go. There you go. Balor. Balor. Balor, the evil eye, demon king of the Fomorians, and grandfather to the sun god. He that changed sounds his like some pretty again. heavy metal stuff, but it's actually Irish mythology. But also, Balor is an island in Azeroth, and oh, Blizzard kind of might have their eyes on it. Once a domain of Stormwind, it was lost in the Second War. But the Second War is far from the last time we've heard about it. Oh, I see. That's like right down the there. Isles, I was trying to figure out where it was. Properly by Blizzard pretty damn recently in BFA. Balor is confirmed Would the to name be Balor? something no that way. they've thought about. Because when asked why Balor didn't show up in Chronicle, Matt Burns, a Blizzard writer who has worked on Chronicle 1 through 3, and uh, a few other things, I mean, speaking of islands, as an example, the Mechagon comic, he said they didn't put it on the map because they didn't want to lock down its location. Celtic. Oh, That's kind of interesting. Ah. Originally, it was off the coast of Stormwind South to what would evolve into the broken shore that we know today. In this old Warcraft 2 design map, we see a volcanic island chain. I mean, hell, that would match pretty damn well with the Azeroth stuff they're doing right now. True. By the early development of World of Warcraft, it evolved to look like this, but then in Warcraft 3's manual, which I would say likely is a little bit more recent, 
um, it was actually moved here with a little bit of detail being lost. Oh. Now, this isn't all. Damn, Wizards that, what really the hell? Hard Arlandy, the Eastern Kingdoms, the old Eastern Kingdoms look so different. Detail being lost. Look at that. What the shit? Lost. Now, this isn't all. Blizzard haven't really went hard Ireland yet. They have touched on us loosely quite a bit, but haven't fully went there. Now, Valor is a part of our mythos, and uh, it could actually inspire some pretty incredible lore. It might even have a way of making the fell relevant again. So in Irish myth, Valor was the king of the Fomorians, a race of sort of demon-like beings who uh, ruled Ireland before our ancestors, the Celts, ever showed up. <laughs> He had one baleful eye on his forehead that remained closed, but when open, he would fly into a bloodlust, killing all around until it shut again. A prophecy foretold that he would be killed by his own grandson, so he Damn. locked his daughter away to prevent her from having children. What? But Balor was the Whoa. sideshow of this prophecy. It was actually foretelling the coming of Luke, the king of the you two of the who are the basically, we could just say, the gods of the Celts. So, Cian, a brave warrior, managed to enter the tower disguised as a woman where he fathered Luke. But Balor what? was cunning in his evil, discovered Luke, and threw him into the sea. But then he was rescued and raised by the sea god Mananan, I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, years later, Luke returned to Ireland as a warrior then and challenged Balor to battle. Balor unleashed his destructive eye, but Luke used his magic flaming spear and struck him in that eye, ending the reign of evil. And with wow. Balor's defeat, story. Luke became the king of the new lords of Ireland, the Tua de Danon. The Tua de oh, You know, a lot, of, a lot of well best. myth and, uh, and, and lore is based in old mythology. There's plenty of that. Is, uh, closer to two families and I mean, one the obvious family, ones are like and, Thor and uh, Odin and stuff. Demons. They're everywhere. They represented order and chaos, which kind of then makes me think, like, why haven't we seen Balor in uh, Azeroth yet? Um, you would know from Steve Denuser's previous work at, uh, I think it was 37 Studios, that, yeah, there's Irish myth in there. So who knows? Yep, Could they do crack. some yep. demonic power that has been there all the old the, god shit since comes the from. Second War, a race of Fomorians who... Uh, worship the true pantheon of fell. I mean, hell, even at Firbolg, that uh, the Firbolg are from Irish myth. So uh, our culture is kind of uh, already over wow, which is kind of interesting. And if I mispronounced anything, uh, yeah, blame the Brits. Okay, Talabim time. <laughs> Talabim, okay. Banana shit post island is what you might know it as. What? We basically knew nothing other than its famous bananas and the diary of a man who got shipwrecked there. And here's oh. the final entry of that. The bananas have started talking to me, and I've learned a great deal about their culture. I have ceased my senseless destruction of their homes and consumption of Confirmed. their young. How little I... Banana playable race coming to WoW. Confirmed. I knew then of the great civilization I was destroying. And oddly enough, patch 10.0.7 is bringing Talabim <laughs> into the lore. Yeah. It's just a, it's just Along a banana island, Justin. Along with the is an iron tide fleet, but anchored in the distance is a seemingly abandoned ship covered in bananas. On the beach nearby is the iron tide captain, Ugbeard, standing triumphantly on a barrel of bananas. Surely a reference to Telebeam then, but could the hallucinogenic effects of these bananas maybe be why, be why the ship is anchored so far away? You know, quarantine while the uh, bananas wear off. Who exactly knows? But then, there are the exploits of a famous Skirt, elf pirate close, called right. Night Squall, who supposedly stashed so much treasure on Telebeam that the island is now 10 feet higher than when he found it in the first place. <laughs> there are many fantastical tales well, surrounding this geez. Night Squall figure that we find out in 10.0.7. Uh, some of the more insane ones, uh, maybe they are just uh, banana-induced hallucinations. Who knows? So they're hallucinogenic but, uh, bananas. Definitely An island filled with them. Much more pirate content in our future. Potentially Taliban. Pirate speaking content. Speaking of pirates... Okay, this one we had to do. Man, that pirate, that pirate ship, we know, we've seen it. That that's that was an in-game mount, I believe you got for... It, I, I, I think it was subbing... For, a, for an extended period of time, imagine they make that available on the trading post. Content in our future, potentially Talibim. For the pirate expansion. Of pirates. Okay, Maybe. This one we have Could to. happen. Plunder Isle. I mean, come on. If we get Plunder this, Isle. then it would likely be a merger of two islands that have appeared basically in the same place. One called Plunder Isle, the other one called Hiji. 
Um, they've shared Hiji. like similar features in many different maps. Uh, hell, I mean, this was even a Hiji. I, I mean, that's not even creative. Well, it's it's taking a Fiji and changing it to first letter. didn't get developed. Now, my read here is that Hiji is the original troll name of the island, but then it later they became smell and taste great. Bananas? It's what? Lore was Bananas are great. in the now non-canonical Lands of Mystery RPG <laughs> sourcebook. But much like how the RPG sourcebook talked about ships sailing beyond the Veil Seas and never coming back, well... That's actually been canonized. We covered it in a recent video. To give you a TLDR of its pre-existing lore, Plunder Isle is a small tropical uh, island. Uh, it is home to many dangerous creatures, including murlocs and basilisks. And murlocs are not dangerous, okay. Who operate out okay. of blood sale holds. Let's get that, the let's get that down. The safe, but not really as much as the isle itself does, because it's packed with dangerous creatures, I and it has no slayer. natural Killed base. Countless it's all murlocs. rocky chaos that means that you need pirate shenanigans to murlocs. get in. From here, then, the Blood Sails do their thing. But who is their leader? And that's where it's fascinating, because in WoW, we officially don't know, but we have had a history with the Blood Sail. I mean, they worked with Van Cleef's Defias, yeah. and, uh, you know, we fought them there. By Kata, then, Blood Sail shenanigans really got out of hand. They tried to take Booty Bay and kick out their rivals, the Blackwater Buccaneers, only, of course, to be thwarted by us. And that's where we killed Fleet Admiral Firulon. Then years pass, the Burning sense, Legion yeah. invades Azeroth, and a special rogue meets the Uncrowned, or the Rogue Order Hall. And in there they find Fleet Admiral Tethys. Yeah, another Fleet Admiral of the Blood yeah, Sail. Shit. Um, and of course he will work uh, in Legion. The new trading the post uh, Pirate Head is, is top tier. Stuff. It's a pretty good one. But we haven't met the top dog, and that could be important. And again, what gives all of this lore a bit of a new edge the is Murloc, in yeah, Tenor the, the Murloc Stone Realm was Robert amazing in the broad story. About like. Captain Night Squall's adventures, um, you know, around the world, it talks about him finding treasure so great that he needs a federation of all of Azeroth's pirates to get in. He mentions the Defiance you guys, and that the Blood Sail amazing. as a part of that plan. Oh. You'd almost think that to need that, you know, that base, he would need to perhaps go to Blood Sail Hold. On Plunder Island. Wouldn't a something. pirate city be badass? As for the original lore of the Blood Sail Captain, like like the one like the one that you get in Pirates of the Caribbean. You guys remember when they went to like the pirate city in Pirates of the Caribbean? Imagine we got like a hub city that looked something like that. That would be fucking amazing. Uh, where is it? Pirate. Pirates of the Caribbean. Here, I want I want to see just a picture of it because I remember thinking this thing was amazing. From the movie. Uh, there's no good images of it. You know what I'm talking about. When they had their meeting and Jack Sparrow came. Oh, here it is. This is it. This is it. This was the Pirate City. It was a picture of it at night. Oh, this is super tiny, though. But the Pirate City. If you guys remember it from Pirates of the Caribbean, that was amazing. I mean, if we got a hub city that looked something like this. This was it during the day, kind of. It was like a, a Jenga freaking style pirate city where you had a bunch of ships combined together I and mean, that there's so many cool things they could do now Kul'tiris, yeah you could say that was a pirate city but it was more it of a basically coastal was city. a noble of lord around that decided to tortuga uh, yes to tortuga let me see if i can find more okay images. the next one is actually bonkers but it is real beetle island i can't believe i never heard of it it's a uh, it's insane and it comes from a warcraft 2 map here's the lore Medivh's portal madness summoned in a truly massive beetle-like creature that was uh, formed from these otherworldly the energies. It rampaged across uh, across the land, devouring everything and risking havoc for both sides. So, in an extraordinary feat of magic, apparently one unmatched thus far, and remember, this time Warcraft 3 hasn't happened yet, uh, the Violet Citadel's mages polymorphed this colossal beetle at the same time that the Orcish right. Death Knights unleashed an onslaught of decay spells. Uh, this mix of transformation and destruction basically formed an island. I mean, imagine what it would look like. An eldritch being destroyed mid-transformation by decay magic. That's insane. It reminds me of weird cosmic horror. You could even go as far and take it in a more uh, sort of... Well, less expected uh, direction. Think about the film Annihilation, right? I love the art uh, direction of that film. That would be very interesting. And I mean, yes, this is fringe lore. But after us being to the Shadowlands and seeing all of those devourers, the massive beast, the massive eldritch beast that formed Beetle Isle when it exploded, uh, does yeah. kind of seem like a massive devourer, doesn't it? Hmm. Okay, next. I feel like they've used devourers so much in the, the game already. Islands. 
Many don't remember them, but they were actually there in Vanilla, south of Tanaris. They're even in Chronicle's world map, but they were removed in Cataclysm. Uh, years before Chronicle. Hold on. If you remember Tortuga, yeah, the, the what's it called? The Lost City or whatever? I mean, yeah, those are images of it. That, that thing was amazing. Like I said, it was like a bunch of ships wrecked together. That was one crazy looking island. Shipwreck Cove. That was what it was called. Amazing. Imagine a city like that in the game. Chronicle, though, which uh, does mean that Chronicle... Worst zone in Corthia, agreed. Chronicity. They even actually played quite a role in the past, one that fans of, say, Barney's Shifting Sand series will remember, because you had to get there for the uh, Scepter of the Shifting Sands, like the really big quest. But the problem is, you would die of fatigue with the swim, so either via special tactics or a swim speed boost uh, granting side quest, you actually could get there. And when you were there, they were pretty bare. There were goblin and gnomish buildings, but not much. But who's to say that there's only a few of these islands? It could indeed be a gateway into quite a bit more. The idea of a South Seas expansion has been covered quite a bit. A I, I, bit the of that pirate expansion just FA. seems inevitable at this point. It's covered, of course, in Pandaria. But uh, who knows? There have been lots of funny little islands dotted all over the place. It only takes world of it Islands. Just it's not World of Warcraft, it's World of Islands. Them. I mean, hell, the big city of Undermine. If they wanted to do something with Undermine, I'm sure they could. All right, but that's not it. Have so we've covered this extensively in another video, but when we're talking about places left to explore, I mean, we could not not cover these, right? We've learned of a place called Avalorn, where a bunch of people that Odin called heretics uh, ended up being shacked up. The name is kind of similar to Avalon. I mean, Avalon, Avalorn. There is a place That's in where Mordoron I've called New Avalon as well, which, uh, you know, is sort of the area thought of as being the cradle of humanity. Uh, nope. So, I mean, how can there be a new Avalon if there is not an old Avalon? Or maybe an Avalorn? After all, a place called Tears Fall was eventually named Tears Fall, as in Tears Fall Glades. Uh -huh. So it's not insane to think. Right. What we do know is this was a pre-sundering island, and whoever these heretics were, they were actually strong enough to repel Odin's uh, expeditions. This is fresh lore, hot, off patch 10.0, so everything mentioned uh, in this video, I mean, of everything in this video, I'd say this is the one we are most likely to see at some stage. Of course, if you've yeah, like heard this more, name already a couple you've times, you've got to check out this video afterwards. But what's really huge is that this could cascade into being the first canonical reference of lands on the other side of Azeroth. <laughs> no, I'm not messing you We're around. going to the other side. The dark side of Azeroth. Back yep, Vanilla, we've talked Blizzard about this. Blizzard rewrote the Warcraft 3 manual into a book called The Old Gods and the Order of Azeroth. It is very biased, and even by Mists of Pandaria, we knew it was suspicious because it was canonically giving a false account of the Well of Eternity's creation. Well, recently, Damn Blizzard Titans always back BS to us. that book, and uh, they essentially give us Neltharion's personal copy of it. We basically stumble into this, and we actually find that he wrote a whole bunch of scribbles and research in the margins of the book. So yeah. get this. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The Titans about made these. giants to shape the earth, creating one perfect continent, calling it Kalimdor. Right? That is uh, that is an excerpt from the original book. But the right. notes in the margins say that the author who wrote those words is either a fool or a liar who is ignorant, quote, of what lies beyond the waves. Yeah. Now remember, the other side. this was written at a time where the known continents were whole. Yeah. The only islands Pangea. are perhaps Avalorn the Pangea and Dragon of Isles. So either Avalorn is what lies beyond the waves, or this is confirmation that separate to Avalorn, there is some sort of second landmass at the rear of the planet. <laughs> it may seem insane oh, the rear of right? for that to be something we've missed, but do remember, places like Pandaria can be magically shrouded, and that would explain why you wouldn't right. be able to see them, say, up from the Vindicar. And any time where we have had a actual I mean, global perspective on Azeroth... Thank God there's fog in World of Warcraft, right? Or we would have never had any expansions. Fog has been a constant theme throughout all of WoW's expansions, right? We had a fog-covered Dragon Isles, a fog-covered Pandaria. We had to sail through the fog to get to Kul Tiras and uh, Zandalar. I mean, it's very, it's a very foggy world, and thanks to that, we have had many, many expansions. What have we seen? World only of Fog a small amount of it, and only from a set angle. Yes, we've I seen the fog of war. Azeroth right. in places like Ulduar, but 
They're made by the Titanforged, who literally don't want us to find out what's going on beyond the waves. What is going on beyond the waves? And also, tales of those who sailed east of east or west of west, essentially to an unknown part of the world, those tales all have them never returning, per the role-playing game, which is not full canon. But plenty of RPG mm -hmm. things have been worked into the game, and uh, of course, with the idea being alive in the community for years, Blizzard probably knew how this would be received. I'd say they especially did it whenever they mentioned that uh, that's where the Night Squall went. You there you go. beyond the Veiled Sea, and it heavily implies that he's able to make it back. This Night Squall guy? So, the whole, you know, what's on the other side of the world? What's beyond the map? It's now canon. Plus, look at the Sargara cinematic. The continents what? that we know clearly do not fill the whole globe. So there you go. The unexplored places. But I mean, what? there are more. Mother teased many more old uh, facilities that we haven't seen. And there are one or two place names that are just name dropped out of nowhere and have no background lore in patch 10.0.7. So, hey, this stuff's going somewhere. All of those old go. facilities that Mother mentioned, they've got to be somewhere on the planet, right? So there you go. All the unexplored places in Azeroth that I could think of. And if you loved the video uh, like this... Valular just revealed the next 10 check expansions. Check out this one next. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Boom. Boom. The next 10 expansions revealed by Bellular. There you go.